Physical Hydrology, Lecture 12 on Surface Water. Measuring the water level, or stage, as it's often called, is an important activity. Firstly, to obtain a record of the stages, and secondly, as we can link the discharges Q of a brook or small stream at specific locations to the stages H slightly upstream, as we discussed in our last lecture. The QH relation is also called, in reversed terms, the stage discharge relation. Man made fixed constructions in the riverbed, such as weirs and flumes, need to comply with a number of conditions, such as a straight upstream reach of some length leading to the construction. Also, the measurement of the stage must be carried out at a distance of two to three times the maximum water level in the crest to avoid the effects of drawdown from water flowing over the crest. Often, in reality, prescribed conditions are not fully met and because of this, QH relations in practice, so-called QH rating curves, may differ from theoretically derived equations. Therefore, it's good practice to calibrate the stage discharge relation in the field by measuring the discharge Q at different stages H. For this, different methods can be used, ranging from directly measuring the discharge, for instance by volumetric gauging under a V-notch weir, which is simply collecting the water flow in a bucket in a set period of time, only suitable for small discharges, to indirectly determining the discharge from water velocity measurements in a cross section of a brook or small river. In this lecture, we will first discuss a number of stage, velocity, and discharge measurement techniques, some of which are shown here, to finish with the technique of fitting a power function trend line through measured stage discharge data to establish a QH rating curve. To measure the water height, Increasing use is made of pressure sensors, as shown to the left here. The pressure sensor is lowered in a pipe that has openings to enable water to flow in. The sensor is lowered in the pipe to the bottom of the stream to measure the total pressure, which equals the water pressure plus air pressure. Another pressure sensor is positioned above the water to measure the air pressure. The difference between the total pressure and air pressure gives the water pressure, which is linearly related to the water height or stage. A similar setup was described earlier for determining the hydraulic head of groundwater in a piezometer. The photo shows part of such a setup with a pressure sensor to measure the air pressure in top, plus a staff gauge, a graduated scale to the right of it that can be manually read off and used as a check. A good way to continuously measure the water stage is in a stilling well installation that is connected to a brook or small stream by water intake pipes as shown to the left here. Such a setup has the advantage that oscillations due to the turbulence of the water flow are subdued. The photo to the right shows a similar setup where water levels are monitored in a small channel connected to the stream also to subdue oscillations due to the turbulence of the water flow. At the beginning of last lecture, the pitot tube and combined pitot tube have been introduced for measuring the velocity head to determine the water velocity along a streamline. By the way, velocity head in Dutch is snelheidshoogte. A well-known instrument for determining the water velocity at different locations and depths in a stream is the Ott-type current meter, named after Albert Ott, as shown here. An Ott-type current meter in Dutch, an Ott-stroomsnelheidsmeter. When the propeller is set as shown, the water flow is from the right, as indicated by the small blue arrow. One may simply determine the water velocity using an electronic device that keeps track of the number of revolutions of the current meter's propeller during a set time interval. The flow velocity can then simply be determined from a calibration equation provided by the manufacturer that links the water velocity to the number of revolutions of the current meter. 
The average water velocity in the vertical can be found by averaging the velocity measurements at different depths. If two measurements in the vertical are made, standard practice is to determine the water velocity at 20 and 80% of the water height and to average these. Another well-known instrument for determining the water velocity at different locations and depths in a stream is the electromagnetic current meter. Such a current meter, as shown here, measures the water velocity by generating a magnetic field in the water around a sensor with the water acting as an electrical conductor. The water velocity is proportional to the voltage measured by the sensor's electrodes, and the average water velocity in the vertical may be determined in the same way as just explained for an odd type current meter. Using an odd type or electromagnetic current meter, the discharge of a brook or small stream can be determined using the velocity area method. Essence of this technique is to summate the discharges through segments of the cross sectional flow area to obtain the discharge for the whole cross sectional flow area. This figure shows an example with velocity measurements at the two water heights, 0.2 times the water height and 0.8 times the water height at equally spaced verticals of the cross-sectional flow area perpendicular to the water flow. As an example, the segment discharge Q23 in cubic meter per second for a segment in between the verticals 2 and 3 equals as shown here. The first term gives the average flow velocity of verticals 2 and 3 in meters per second the second term gives the average water height in between verticals 2 and 3 in meters. The third term gives the width of the segment in meters. Multiplication of the values for these terms delivers the discharge of section 23 in cubic meter per second. Then determine the discharge for all other sections and add the results for all sections together to obtain the discharge of the brook or small stream. This figure shows how the discharge can also be determined using a graphical method. For all verticals, draw a graph of the velocity v in meter per second with the water height h in meter on millimeter paper. Following our above example, such a graph would have to be constructed from velocity measurements at the two water heights, 0.2 times the water height and 0.8 times the water height. Then, simply by counting the millimeter squares, or preferably use a spreadsheet program to do so, determine the area in square meter per second to the left of the curve. Such an area, in fact, is the specific discharge QW in square meter per second for the vertical under study. In the same way, determine the specific discharges of the other verticals under study. Next, construct a top view of the cross section where the values of the just determined specific discharges QW in square meter per second are represented by arrow lengths. The arrows begin at their exact location in the cross section and are drawn in the direction of flow. Connect the arrow points to draw a graph of the specific discharge QW in square meter per second with the width w in meter of the stream and determine the area to the left of the curve this area equals the discharge q in cubic meter per second in mountain streams the operation of an odd type current meter may be difficult due to the turbulence of the water flow high velocities or rocks and shallow sections in the channel under such circumstances the velocity area or graphical method cannot be used However, a well-suited technique for estimating the discharge in turbulent mountain streams is provided by salt dilution gauging, where the discharge is determined from the degree of dilution by the flowing water of an added solution of sodium chloride or table salt. There are basically two methods of salt dilution gauging, constant rate injection and slug injection. Using constant rate injection, a salt solution is added to the stream with a constant rate or discharge. 
This method works well for determining the discharge in small mountain streams with flows less than 100 liter per second, thus less than 0.1 cubic meter per second. At high discharges, it becomes difficult to accurately determine the discharge. Also, one should guard for the safety of the people performing the needed measurements, as the power of flowing water is never to be underestimated. A relatively safe method of salt dilution gauging then is provided by slug or gulp injection, where a slug or gulp of salt solution is emptied instantaneously into the stream. This method is well suited for discharges up to 10 cubic meter per second. Prior to the constant rate injection, a fluorescent color dye, for instance uranine or rhodamine, may be added to the stream at the location of the Marriott bottle to visually determine the downstream location where complete mixing of the injected salt solution with the flowing water will occur during the experiment. This figure shows a schematized top view of a stream during constant rate injection of a salt solution to estimate the discharge of the stream. All mentioned concentrations are in milligram per liter. The salt solution is added from a Marriott bottle with a constant rate or discharge QI. The salt solution in the bottle has a concentration CI that must be much higher than the upstream salt concentration CU of the stream. After equilibrium sets in during the injection experiment, a water sample may be taken at this downstream location to determine the salt concentration CG of the water. The salt load in milligram per second of the river upstream of the injection point equals the multiplication of the river discharge Q in liter per second and the upstream salt concentration CU in milligram per liter. Likewise, the injected salt load in milligram per second from the Marriott bottle equals the multiplication of the constant injection rate QI in liter per second and the Marriott bottle's salt concentration CI in milligram per liter. At the downstream point of complete mixing, the salt load in milligram per second equals the multiplication of the total discharge Q plus QI in liter per second and the sample downstream salt concentration CD in milligram per liter. A simple mass balance or chemical mixing model tells us that adding together the salt load in milligram per second of the river upstream of the injection point and the salt load in milligram per second from the injection point must deliver the salt load in milligram per second at the downstream measuring location. We can thus write the mass balance or chemical mixing model for constant rate injection of a salt solution into a stream as shown here. Knowing the values of QI and CI and CD with QI simply determined from the falling water level in the Marriott bottle, you can determine the discharge Q from this equation. With a slug or gulp injection, a slug or gulp of salt solution is emptied instantaneously into the stream. Again, as with the above discussed constant rate injection, the concentration of the added salt solution must be much higher than the base concentration CB of the stream. The slug or gulp causes a salt water wave to pass downstream through the channel. This figure shows the passing of the salt water wave with salt concentration CD in milligram per liter at the downstream measurement point with complete mixing. The shaded area A under the CD curve but above the base level concentration CB can mathematically be written as shown here. T1 and T2 are the start and ending time of the passing salt water wave. CB is the base level of the stream's salt concentration in milligram per liter. The shaded area A has units milligram per liter along the vertical axis multiplied by seconds along the horizontal axis 
thus milligram seconds per liter. Theoretically, if we know the mass of salt M in milligram added to the stream by the slug injection, we can determine the discharge Q in liter per second of the measuring reach as Q equals M divided by A. You may check the units to see that this is true. Slug or gulp injection is also known as the ionic wave method, referring to the passing saltwater wave, and integration method, referring to the mathematical integration against time as main part of the method. We now know the principles behind two salt dilution gauging methods for determining the discharge of a turbulent stream. Practice, however, differs considerably from theory. In practice, the concentration of the water is not determined, as this would involve demanding sampling and laboratory analysis. But instead, the electrical conductivity, or EC, of the water is determined, as this can be done very rapidly in the field. Salt dilution gauging then involves setting up a calibration curve between the electrical conductivity, or EC, and the concentration of the water, more specifically, the relative concentration of the water. As this is a rather technical story, I will refer for this to pages 233 to and including 236 of my book. Also, it is best to learn from doing in the field. I've placed an interactive spreadsheet on the online resource center or companion website of my book to aid in establishing the calibration curve and for estimating the discharge using either method, constant rate injection or slug injection. The electrical conductivity, or EC, in Dutch, elektrisch glijdend vermogen of EGV, is a measure of the water's ability to conduct electricity, and therefore a measure of the water's ion concentration. The EC can be measured in the field with a simple small stick-like apparatus attached with a wire to a measuring device, as shown here. The EC is measured in microsiemens per centimeter. Measuring the EC at a large number of locations in the longitudinal profile of one or more streams and penciling in the so obtained EC data on a map or in a sketch of the longitudinal profile of a stream is called EC routing. Such a routing can, for instance, provide useful information on the locations of upward seepage of groundwater with a strongly differing chemical composition into a stream. The figure to the left shows the top view of two streams numbered as 1 and 2 that meet and continue as one stream numbered as 3. When we know the discharge of one of these branches or tributaries 1, 2 or 3, measuring the EC in all tributaries may enable us to figure out the discharges of the other two tributaries. To do so, the EC values of the confluencing tributaries should differ significantly. For instance, one tributary drains a forest and the other tributary drains arable land with a high nitrate load. To obtain trustworthy results, the EC of the downstream tributary should be measured at a location where the water from both upper branches is completely mixed. The method involves setting up two mass balance equations, one for water, the continuity equation, and one for the total dissolved solids, presented as the EC, a chemical mixing model. As the EC values at locations 1, 2 and 3 are measured as part of the EC routing, knowing the value of one of the discharges, either Q1, Q2 or Q3, means that we have two equations with two unknowns, which can be solved mathematically, as is also shown in box 5.7 of my book. Instead of using the EC, one may also use the concentration of a conservative ion, that is a non-reactive ion as it passes through a catchment, for instance, chloride. Simply substitute the chloride concentration for EC in the chemical mixing equation. This results in the lower equation shown here. Exercise 5.2.6 in my book provides an example of such a chloride routing for fresh and acid water streams in the Ijen Caldera, Java, Indonesia. This figure shows QH measurements for a stream. 
The stage H in centimeter is measured with a staff gauge upstream of a weir, and the discharge Q in liter per second is measured using one of the just introduced methods. The stage measurements in this figure stand uncorrected. That is, the maximum water level H0 along the staff gauge, at which the discharge Q equals 0, has not yet been determined. For water flow through a weir, the H0 level is determined by the altitude of the weir crest, and it's possible to determine the H0 level from land surveying. However, the maximum stage with zero discharge H0 may also be estimated from visual inspection, and in this figure, a value of H0 of 30 centimeters seems a good estimate. Note that the validity of the estimate can best be checked after fitting a trend line through the Q H minus H0 data as shown in the following figure. When we subtract H0 as 30 cm from the just presented stages, we can construct the QH relation for the measured data points with H minus H0 in cm as the stage or water level above the weir crest. In a spreadsheet, a power function trend line has been fitted through the Q versus H minus H0 data points. From the curvature of the trend line follows that H minus H0 equals 0 when the discharge reaches 0, and that H0 is 30 cm, thus is a good estimate. Also, a power function as trend line produces a curve that fits the measured QH data well. Mathematically, the power function shown can be written as shown here. The values of A and B in the equation can best be found after rewriting the equation in a logarithmic form, as shown here. The data will plot as a straight line in a graph with log Q on the vertical axis and log H minus H0 on the horizontal axis. We can then simply find log A as the intercept when log H minus H0 equals 0. and b as the slope of the fitted line. The QH rating curve is sensitive to hysteresis, the phenomenon of an equilibrium state being dependent on the history of the physical system. Hysteresis of the QH rating curve stems from the reality that a change in discharge Q can be linked to both a change in water velocity and a change in the wetted area perpendicular to the water flow. The presence of vegetation in the water can also be important in this respect. For instance, when vegetation stands upright at the start of a storm, causing resistance to the water flow, but is flattened towards the end of the storm, with the opposite effect. Thus, if enough data is available, it may be recommendable to construe separate QH rating curves for rising and falling water levels that is, the rising and falling limbs of a hydrograph, which is a graph of the changes in discharge or water level as a function of time, and one of the topics of the next lecture. Again, good luck with the exercises. Study well.